Hello everyone. This is Rajesh Pichaimani and I'm a solutions architect at Amazon Web Services. This is going to be a two-part series on Q4 developer. We're going to start with the first one. And here are some of the topics that we'll be covering today. First is introducing you to the service, what is Q developer on a very high level. And there are some steps to get started. And I wanted to show, walk you through that. And this will be for primarily for personal use. The primary objective is to easily get started and get your feet wet on some of the big capabilities of Q. And which will have a seamless transition when you start using it in your organization. After we get started with um, basic steps, I'll walk you through with some of the examples and finally conclude with some references. So let's get this started. Q for developer is one of the service among the suite of services under Amazon Q. And the developer capability is primarily aimed for the developer community in aiming to improve the product developer uh, productivity efficiency. It assists the developers and IT professionals in their daily tasks in offering some code suggestions, offering unit testing scenarios, and also in some cases, upgrading applications. And you'll also be able to perform some security scanning and fixing them as well. Below are listed references for Q that we will be using it throughout the course of this session. And these links will be linked in the description as well. Here are some of the steps. Some of them I have already uh, installed, completed. I'll try my best to make sure that you will walk through the steps in a very seamless manner. The first one is installing the IDE. It can be any of them, either VS Code or IntelliJ, et cetera. And I'll be using VS Code in my example walkthrough. I'm assuming that most of the audience of this session is going to be a developer and have some form of the ID installed, but um, this is one of the prerequisite as well. The second one is signing in with a builder ID to get some authentication validation completed and getting them out of the way, which will help to have the queue interact with your ID of your choice. Once we get those things out of the way, I'm going to share some examples of what we can do uh, to get started again. And for this, I'm going to leverage the Q for developer workshop as listed here. And focusing on this section, understanding optimization and fixing existing code on these three tasks in this part of this series. In the next series that's going to come up shortly after this, we'll focus on the other two parts, editing the new and existing code and architecture ideation. So I'm going to switch my screen here, starting with this. Again, the getting started documentation. As you scroll down to the screen somewhere in the middle of this page, you will see the section Q for developer. Uh, we will start with the installation. Um, with the assumption that the installation completed. Once it is completed, then we'll go to the authentication. You click on this builder ID and it will take you to this page here. Clicking on this link will further take you to this page like this. Here is where you will enter your personal email address and click on next. And at this point of signing up, within a few minutes, you will get a, uh, you have an email from your inbox with some validation code. 
come back here in this page and complete this where uh, enter the validation code that you received and the completion of the process will take you to the page something like this request approved okay this indicates that the validation process has been successfully completed and we will be able to use q for developer in the id that you have chosen next i'll keep this link open as we will go through the workshop this is a workshop and the link for this will also be provided in the description as well we'll start with the onboarding and then proceed with optimization and fixing existing code next i will switch to the page for the vs code here we are in VS Code. The first one in the step here is you will download a zip file from this workshop called Demo Serverless Microservice Local. Unzip it and bring it here in the project window. And this is what you see. Code Whisperer for Basics with some folders and files here. Next step is installing the Amazon Q extension here from this extensions page. Type in here and you will end up in the first option. If you are using this for the first time, you will see the install button instead of uninstall. It's a simple click, just like any other plugin installation. And you will have that in the category of installed plugin. And once this has been done and the successful validation also has been done, you will see this icon here in the left pane, Amazon Q. Okay. Here is where we will start with interacting with the code and chatting it. So let's get this started. I'm going to open this Explorer window. The first example on the onboarding side, I'm going to choose the directory eWallet, eWallet stack.py. The scenario here in this onboarding is, say you have a uh, someone written the code from your team and you are asked to improvise or take the additional task because this particular author is not available. So the first step obviously is to understand what this has been written and assuming that this is a scenario, we're going to use the same steps. Select the entire code and right-click it. Amazon Q and then click on Explain. It will take you to the page here, the Q chat. It's copy pasted and within a few seconds, you will see some output that Q generates. What the response of the Q is indicating is it is explaining you the code in a logical fashion here. It explains that the code consists of DynamoDB tables and highlights the table names, information about the individual tables, the summary of the Lambda functions, and the individual summary of those functions, API gateways, etc., etc. And assume that you got a pretty decent understanding of the code it looks like. You can still further ask question something like this. Here I am pretending that um, I do not know about CDK and I wanted to ask what Q is providing me. And again, just like the previous question, it'll respond with some answer. To help us show some uh, quick way of understanding a particular technology and also show some re references as well. Okay. So, this is one example of selecting the entire code and trying to get an explanation. The second scenario is going to again e wallet folder. And this time I'm going to further go down to controller and click on withdraw.py. Instead of choosing the entire code, I'm going to select 
a particular portion of the function uh, validate payload selecting that and i'm going to say explain one more time the difference in the first and the second is very obvious the first one focuses on the entire code the second one focuses on a particular portion of the snip sample of the code and here is what the response says and in in a real life situation you will actually go through this in a line by line detail to make sure that um, you have consumed the entire responses in a logical fashion the second one is in the category of optimization code optimization so for this i'm going to go back to the explorer e wallet controller withdraw.py one more time and select the same section of the code validate payload and in this time instead of explain i'm going to say optimize the use case for this is um this example might look trivial but uh, i'm just illustrating the fact that say if you have written this code by yourself uh, a while ago and then after some time when you come back and revisit the code you might think that um, it can be improvised and that's a task that we are trying to explain here we can say optimize uh, and q will offer some suggestions what can be done here right um, going back to the starting of the response here it says here are some optimizations option one option two so on and so forth and depending upon uh, what your use case is you can choose to accept it or further um, add more to the use case you can see utilize dictionary This is a scenario that I'm ignoring the previously offered suggestions, and I'm going to specifically um, make it a prompt to say, I need to optimize in a certain way. And in this case, it is like using a Python dictionary. And Q is offering some suggestions. Okay. Now, in this point, um, we have a couple of options. Either we, we like this particular uh, section of the code that we want to incorporate. So I can say, insert it at the cursor. I'll move the cursor here and say, insert it at cursor. So it will insert the entire copy uh, of this sample of the section to my main code. Or I can use a conventional copy and paste and then make changes along the way, right? Or I can choose to make a copy of the file before inserting any make changes. So assuming that this is a original file that I want to keep intact and make a copy of the file and make those changes and then merge it later. So either, either way is possible, but you get the idea here. You can insert it at the cursor and copy paste. So this is the example in the optimization section. You select this code, a particular portion of the code, you can say optimize it. Um, you can accept the optimization out of the box, or you can further refine your prompts to come back and say, I need to have the optimization done in a certain way based on the, my organization policy, and then choose to go in that direction as well. Finally, I want to show you the example of fixing the code, existing code. For this purpose, I'm going to go for Explorer, eWallet. This time, I'm going to choose a repository folder and DynamoDB wallet repository.py. Similar to the previous situation, I'm going to choose a particular portion of the code, in this case, a define find function, and then say Q send it to prompt 
So now this entire part of the code is copied here and then I'm going to ask a question telling me I'm asking Q to provide me a list of recommendation to handle the failure scenarios in this wallet application. As you're seeing from the responses that's coming out of Q, here it's telling the first one is how to handle the DynamoDB exception errors and uh, handling missing or malformed data etc cetera, etc cetera. and if things like implementation of retries and exponential back off in case of um lots of requests coming in in a very short amount of time right so again just like the the previous category of optimization once we have some recommendation that comes out of this um q output we can either insert it at the cursor or copy it to include in your original code or a copy of the code to further validate and do the testing. Okay. So as you're seeing here in a very short amount of time, we are able to install a queue. We're able to uh, validate some of the scenarios. One is uh, understanding the code, the brand new code in the onboarding category and start optimizing it to improvise further on the existing code. And assuming the code has some uh, deficiencies, it can also be uh, fixed as well with some suggestions, as you saw in the third example. Okay. So going back to the slides here, I wanted to summarize what we have done so far. We have walked through the scenario of how to uh, set up queue in your favorite ID, how to sign in with the builder ID. Uh, again, this is for personal use. How to easily um, start integrating with your existing code and do some basic tasks, such as getting familiarized with the already existing code, doing some kind of optimization and also, you can go to the extent of fixing the code as well. In terms of the next steps, we will continue in the second part series here. We'll continue with the second, um, the other sections of the Q work Builder Workshop, which is editing and uh, new and existing code, and also the application troubleshooting and architecture ideation as well. To summarize, here are some of the references that can help you um, with the content that we talked about, starting with the Q documentation and also the build um, validating with your builder ID, with your email addresses. And also this third link is pointing to the Q4 developer workshop. Thank you for your time. And I hope you found this content useful. And we will see you in the next series shortly. Thanks a lot. Bye.